Well, in the aspect of cutting some stuff out, I'm going to just say it right here. I am no expert at anything I do. If you don't like the way I'm doing it, don't do it. And if you do do something I do, see if I can say do more times, I am not responsible if you do. You are responsible for your own safety, for your own equipment, and for your own knowledge of how to do something. Hey YouTube and thank you for watching Junkworks Garage. Well, I'm doing several videos on this uh, 14 bolt rear end here in my GMC. So uh, go check them all out. But I just got done doing the pinion setup in here, putting new bearings in, pressing them in, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so now I need to check the backlash here. So I got this set up now to check backlash on this thing and uh, quite honestly we are like high side of 12 which is as far as you'd want to push one of these. For you that noticed there is a different bolt here than there is here. Now I'm assuming this is the original here and this is Mr. Hackman's bolt here. Um, so I am going to see if I can find this or not uh, or put a washer on. I really don't want I'm going to see if I can find these bolts and get a set of them ordered up. So right here this thing has holes in it so you turn it up and down on that side and this side to make it either go that way or that way. Now mine is too loose so I need to go closer to the pinion so I need to bring it from this direction this way closer to the pinion because as I do this it's too sloppy there's too much of a gap in these teeth right here instead of being in nice and tight where it should be at you know eight thousand five to eight thousandths it's clear out here on this edge barely holding on with 12 thousandths so the pinions my finger here basically so I'm gonna loosen these up I gotta find out what size that is and uh, I'm not gonna pull them off like I said I'm just gonna loosen them all right I got a 13 sixteenths here I'm gonna, before I break anything loose here, get these back in. I'm just gonna kind of bring them in until they're snug but not tight, where they kind of want to just naturally stop. I watched some videos, and uh, one of them was JK Gear and Gadgets. He has a pretty good uh, video on doing all this stuff, um, so uh, go check him out if you would like. And I am going to steal something that he did. And on the left hand side, which is over here, he put the loosen. So left is up is loosen. And right to loosen is down it's the opposite um, also another site I used I don't know if I've talked about it already is Bill of Vista um, if you like reading things I'm more of a watcher than a reader uh, but if you like reading things the Bill of Vista site has all this information and it seems to be uh, pretty on par with what you should do so here we go. I'm going to do what I can do with what I got and we will move forward from there. Well, confession time. I've been messing with these and they, I don't think that they put enough compression on this here. So I think um, I, until, unless I start all over again, I'm not going to get this right. So I'm going to start out. We're going to make this zero lash basically. So I already took a transfer punch and punched these where this originally started, which is where I have it right now. And the reason why I don't think there's any preload on it is because, um, you know, that's not very tight. 
and this is where it was originally whoop, originally there all the way in so to me it feels like the guy tightened this up where it needed to be and then you got to put put I can't remember if it's two and a half or three depending on the bearings you're using which I'm using the original bearings that are in here uh, more turns on this to put pressure and uh, I don't believe that was done I'm so. just gonna go ahead and loosen this all the way up so then tighten this one up And I cannot get to the one hole turn on this one. So um, we have just kind of just till it's snug kind of thing. We are pretty well set up at zero backlash. I am going to yet again loosen this up. pretty much all the way and I'm going to loosen this one up a bunch too and I'm gonna see if I can yeah see I can move this back and forth so I just have these snug they're not tightened down to where they need to be um, and now I can move this back and forth if I move that all the way in, uh, I can uh, I can actually see where it's not even hitting over here right now. So right now I'm going to snug this one up. And a little bit just to make sure. So right there we got that one all the way in. And then snug this one up. Okay, so we're hitting right there. Okay, so we're hitting right there. Now we have this pretty well at zero. Um, you know, not tightened, just kind of hitting here and just kind of hitting over here. Left or loosen, I mean, not left. Loosen is up, loosen is down. So now I need this to go that direction. So I need to loosen this and tighten this. But we need preload on here, which is what I don't think was on here or had been set up from before. So according to that guy, I need to move this two spots because I'm using used bearings under here as to where if you have new bearings you'd want to move it three spots now he kind of went by the um, holes but really in my opinion I'm going to use the center of these hooked with this um, instead of the actual holes so I'm going to go hopefully we can get there there is one Two. So, in theory, this has preload. This just put preload on this. So we're still in the same place. We're still at zero lash, but it's pushing against this. So now we need to go that way because I need five to seven thousandths is what most people seem to be saying. It can be anywhere between, I think, five and twelve thousandths but nobody wants to be at that high number and you definitely don't want to be at the low number um, as these work themselves in they will get hot which will expand so these will actually get a tighter tolerance as you're using them so five to seven is seems to be a good ballpark number to go for so that's what I'm gonna go for so yet again, we're at zero, we're there. We have our preload adjusted into here. Yet again, do your own research. So since I need to go that way, I need to loosen this up and tighten this up. So I'm going to, we are, I'm going to actually 
should have probably put that in there closer to that but since we're starting from the beginning it doesn't really matter we have a little bit more preload now that I did that but I'm gonna back this off Whoa. okay so one and I'm just gonna go two right there and yet again I'm going by the center of what these are so since I went two here I'm going to go, nope, oh, I'm going to need a loose, yeah, nope, I need to tighten. One, two. Now the funny thing is, is the old mark that was on here that I didn't even see before that, uh, that some other person put on is right there. So that's probably where he started at. So, according to the Villa Vista site, these need to be set for 135 foot-pounds. And uh, so that's what I'm going for here. Spent some time, got this kind of set up, the dial caliper set up on here. I got it right on the tip of one of these teeth up here. Um, so okay. once I get it even close, then I'll mess with this one and get it dead on zero. Yeah. I zoomed you in to see if you can kind of see this a little bit. But so I'm holding down on this just to take whatever slack it is. And I'm zeroing it out. So it's on zero right there. I could move these little things. Which I may try because that's going to be kind of in my way. But uh, let's see. That'll be five, six, seven. So really, I don't want to go past this black knob right here. Yet again, I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to get it back on the zero here. Give it a little bit of a tap just to see if things move. This is a cheap caliper I admit so there we go we're on zero now I'm just gonna go up oh and I it went the other direction so we're at one two three four so four is too tight might be okay but too tight I want to be between five and seven closer to seven so I'm gonna see we need to go that way so we need to loosen this one up so I'm gonna go one looser and tighten this one up which will shove it that way whoop went the wrong way so we're gonna go one tighter All right, now we got a 135 foot-pounds again on these. So now we're looking five and seven, and we are at about seven and a half, and that's close enough for me because it's not quite on the zero there, and it's going not quite to the eight here. So a little over seven. I'm gonna call that. I'm happy with it. We're gonna leave her how she is. Now it's time to check the pattern between the ring gear and the pinion gear. I've cleaned some of these teeth up with some brake clean here. And I got this and a whole package of these. This came from Amazon. I'll put a price somewhere down here as well as if I can find the price for these, they weren't more than, they were like 250 or something like that for, uh, there's what you get in the can. It's kind of on its side, it was laying on the edge a little bit. I'm gonna take the top and go ahead and just run my 
thing through there and uh, we'll start here and start painting both sides of the teeth, the front, the back, everything. All right, I'm going to call that for now. And we are going to take this for a ride. All right. So here's where we need about 50 pounds of preload on this thing. 40 to 50 pounds of preload keeping this from turning. Um, now the way I have this set up, I actually have my truck up on my lift and I jacked it up just enough to where my tires are about 50 pounds before they want to turn. So that's how I'm doing it. You can decide how to do it on you. Um, I'm by myself. It talks about in uh, the Bella Vista having somebody just push on the brakes if you got it in your truck. Somebody can push on your brakes while you're doing this. Now we're going to look at the tops of all of them and the bottoms of all of them and as you can clearly tell that pinion needs to come this way quite a bit. Um, we're definitely way too far over on this side over here but I will say in and out right now that is looking really good like I'm quite happy with the pattern I'm getting and where the pattern is I just need it to be, to be further in the middle here instead of way over on the side but what I showed you was kind of a representation of what you need to do now before we do check the pinion depth um, you need to go around and check with your dial caliper the backlash in like four different spots three to four different spots so so in order to just kind of get through this video and and show you basics of what you need to do um i'm not going to go and show you four different spots of me doing that but really you should check your backlash in more than one spot before you move on to getting the pinion depth once again my pinion depth is uh, not correct so I'm going to do a separate video on that so go watch that one go check out my OBS uh, GMC slash Chevy playlist best play it has all kinds of videos on this truck uh, and it'll have all the stuff I'm doing to the 14 bolt rear end on this truck so um, go check that out if you need to know a beginning to end basically of how to do all this stuff so, in that case, we're going to call that a video. Hopefully somebody got something out of this. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching Junkworks Garage, where I'm proud to say I'm a jack of all, and obviously, master none. You all have a good one.